All right, guys, today's going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to focus on big picture stuff. I'm going to talk about my investment thesis for the last couple of years and how I made so much money, how I made 700% returns on average across the portfolio this last year in 2023. And that involves what I call asymmetric diversification. And so that's what we're going to cover right now. Looking at the pie chart here, you can see this is a little bit outdated. I need I, I made some additional trades on Friday, but I was sick and I just didn't update the chart. So you can see here that I've got 10 to 15 different investments. It's a little better diversified and equated out um, in the latest version. But the whole point I, I wanted to get across here is that you can see that I have roughly, right now it's probably like 38%, 39% in Bitcoin miners and related investments. And then I have my own personal hardware wallet too that I don't really disclose the details of. But So I've got a decent amount in there before this halving coming up and this next cycle really kicks off. So I've got that. And then I also have PayPal. People have said that, oh, you put over 300000 in PayPal. That's such a huge amount of your portfolio. It's 14%. So it's not really that big of a bet. And then you can see, again, there's other investments in here too, like Hood, which I have options on, SoFi, options, Arc Genomics, options. And then I have options on uh, Square as well, which is a smaller por portion in here. And then I have um, in Okta, I have some. I've got a hedge in BBY, Best Buy. I think that dies no matter what. So I'm probably going to be using that as a hedge here too as I make more money. But And then TNA, which is a 3x leverage fund against the Russell Index. I've got a diverse, diversified portfolio. That's what I'm trying to get across here is that it might be concentrated in different segments. But if a couple of these pay off, and again, I, I think of Bitcoin and Crypto is like a really high uh, ch potential chance of making a ton of money, especially in the macro environment we're on. I won't go into all the weeds here, but but uh, in 2020, 2022 was tough for everybody, right? Like there's not a lot of, if you were shorting markets or long commodities, you did all right in 2022. Um, I was learning about really incorporating that into my strategy. It wasn't a focus of mine and it, it was nothing I'd really done before. Um, I'd seen it, but I'd never really uh, went into it. So that's something I've learned since. And uh, I learned it really well going along with calls in 2023. Again, made that 700%. That started off with um, investments in Meta and Tesla. And that's what I wanted to focus on here. I wanted to show you some of these returns and then explain why I, I take this path in my investment strategy. So Meta... This is as far back as I could find, March of 2021. I started tw Twitter really like the end of 2022, I think it was, but never really used it. Started to in like the beginning of 2023. Um, and so I put out my ideas. I can't, I could never find those posts. I just started bookmarking stuff as I got bigger. And that happened um, right around this time in March, April. I started to kind of pick up and people started to follow me probably because of my large gains. But you could see in here, where even at that time, and Meta went up a lot higher after this, but I had already made uh, a decent return, roughly you know 289% off of some of these calls that I had with Meta. Um, I ended up booking over $250,000 in returns from Meta. Um, Tesla was the same way. I did that when it was down near 100. I bought a bunch. You can see on my 200 strike calls for January 2025, these are leaps. So I had a ton of time for these to play out, almost two years. I bought these in like early, like January, maybe even February of 2023. So, so I had two years for these things to hit $200 a share and nobody thought it was going to, right? Well, that was an easy, easy bet for me. And as you can see from these returns, 437% is a lot of money. And I got that because I was willing to take a bet with $47,000 that turned into, as of the time of the screenshot, $177,000. Uh, in gains, the total was 224. So my whole thesis is looking at opportunity. I saw at the beginning of 2023 by following some really brilliant people like Michael Howell and a few others that global liquidity was picking up before people even really started talking about global liquidity. These guys were talking about it. They were, they were saying the opposite of what everyone else was saying. And I could tell that it was true and see this and quantify it in a number of different ways. Plus, best or uh, Meta was down 75%. So, I mean, 
place in a bet where the calls are cheap and you got two years for it to happen and the upside is asymmetric. Again, what I'm trying to convey here, asymmetric diversified opportunities, right? So when you can get returns that are significantly greater and the probability of success is high, and by high, I mean like 70%, 75%, you could lose 100%, but if you're gaining 600, you could place five of those bets. And if one of them works out, you're in the money. If two of them work out, you made a bunch of money. If three of them, and so on and so forth. So you you got to take these opportunities when they're afforded to you. Real quick, disclaimer time. I am not a financial advisor. I'm a high school dropout who became a multimillionaire from investing. I retired four years ago at the age of 42. I'm 46 now. I'll be 47 not too many months from now. So again, this isn't financial advice for you. This is me telling a story that maybe you can glean some knowledge from and then find opportunities in the future that might turn out well for you. And again, the point I'm trying to make, this PayPal, if you look here at this allocation, 14% is a decent amount, but if it all went belly up or let's say I lost 70%, I'd still have the other 90% that are in asymmetric bets. So if that didn't work out, it's not the end of the world for me. And since I won with Meta and Tesla because I had the fortitude and I had the foresight to realize that these stocks down 75% from their all-time highs was stupid and that they would rebound based upon technicals, fundamentals, and the macro lining up. So I placed those bets. I made over half a million dollars on those two. By the time May came around, end of April, beginning of May, I, I developed another thesis. It was Palantir. I said, hey, look at this chart. It's an inverse head and shoulders. You can see where it's wound up here. I think it's going to go up to about $15. And when it does that, I'm going to make a lot of money. And then I pointed out over here, let's say it goes to $15. I can make, well, in this case, it did it a lot quicker than that. I made about $400,000 on this, but this was before. I was still buying at this phase. So... Again, I gave the investment thesis in these posts. I, I wrote up some very thoughtful analysis. And uh, people told me that I was a little crazy and that they couldn't believe I was placing these kind of bets with options. I think I even have one. Yeah, here's one from Arnie. Great guy. Um, he believes in concentration. And concentration has a place, like, again, 85% or something in, in uh, Palantir. But I wasn't concentrated in Palantir. I probably only had 15 to 20% of my portfolio at the time. But I made $600,000 off of it. Um, and that's pretty good money. And I used people like Arnie. I shouldn't say used. That's a bad word. But bad descriptor. But I, I looked at him and I could tell that he knew what he was talking about. And I listened to him. And I did research along with other people. And I realized, hey, this is a good bet. This is great opportunity. I see, I see that there's, there's bullish convergence and divergence on the RSI, the MACD, going back years. There's opportunity here. And since global liquidity is picking up, I already did this with Meta and Tesla. Let's do it again. And I did that. And I made another $600,000. So I was compounding returns. And I did this all by, by like June. This, I think I made six hundred grand in like two months on this one. Again, great opportunity. And can you do well with being concentrated? You can. You can do all right. But here's the thing. There's opportunity cost that arises from such things. If you're in Palantir or let's say Tesla, great example on Tesla. Let me actually pull up the chart on that one. I don't think I could pass that up. Anybody who's been invested in Tesla the last two and a half years can probably attest to how much fun it's been if they've had all their money in it. So if we go to the daily chart here, Going back to November of 2021 was the peak of this thing. So 2022, 2023, we're in 2024, and people are down 55% from the peak. So there's massive opportunity cost here. If you would have had this money in like a meta or any other number of investments, you, uranium, any, any, any number of investments, you could have made tons of money. Palantir, again, those options that I had, you made tons of money. And here, you made nothing. 
Two plus years have went by and you made nothing. You're down potentially on your investment unless you were one of these people who had brass balls like me and went in at $100 doing the math and knowing the opportunity. Again, use these options calculators. Use the option chains. Figure this stuff out. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't know TA, if you don't know macro, if you don't know fundamentals, follow me, ring the bell, join. I would greatly appreciate it if people would join and even just pay $3 a month to help support my work. I want to expand. I want to do a lot of videos. I want to provide a lot of content. I want to cover tutorials on all different kinds of topics. I want to find opportunities. I want to create a group of people that find asymmetric bets and vet them out and make tons of money off of them. I want to be like the GME, the GameStop, the Roaring Kitty, the deep effing value, but I want to, I don't want to fight the system. I want to find opportunities that can benefit us and help companies that are benefiting the world in some way. Tesla, great company. I will be deep in that stock again in the future after pulling in hundreds and hundreds more percent of returns on other things. I will be heavily, and I'll have more capital to devote to support. I will be the buyer of last resort when this stock drops hard again and nobody is willing to step in. I will be one of those people just like I was last time, and I'll pick up that opportunity. I want to support companies like this. I want to support Palantirs that are making the world safer. Anderals, even though that's not publicly tra uh, traded. SpaceX, all these companies... Again, I think that Robinhood is doing something to help investors, too, in the States. If nothing else, it's just a great opportunity to be able to make a bunch of money and then devote that to other things that I believe are really going to change the world and make it better. So I, I, want, I want to do more of this. And if you join and you can help contribute to that, it helps out immensely because then I can get help. Um, <laughs> I don't want to... I'm already giving away stuff for free and devoting a lot of time to passing this information on to other people. I don't want to pay somebody to help me at the same time. So again, anything you can contribute is, is I'm incredibly grateful for. I digress. Let's get back to the topic here. So again, opportunity cost is a big thing. You don't want that. You don't want to lose money because you missed opportunity. I see opportunity in a number of stocks right now. PayPal is one of them. Again, that 14% IN that's ha that I'm in is so crazy. This thing's been down. It's it's peak basically, basically it's at the price of a peak. Well, no, I should say it peaked roughly a thousand. Let me move forward. 1100 days ago almost. So this thing's been flushed out. When I look at this chart, it is flushed out. It is at lows that are obscene. It is at price points from September of 2017. This is like heading on seven year stuff, okay? Even though this company has grown and gotten better over time. And I'm just going to pull this up here real quick. I want to show you. I want to show you what PayPal looks like, okay? Okay. Let's go in here. I'm going to search for this real quick. I want to show you what this looks like. So PayPal is actually doing all right. Their transaction margins have dropped, sure. But total payment volumes went up. They got rid of their idiot CEO that was making a bunch of woke decisions and just really bad ideas that even liberals like myself don't agree with. Active customer accounts been fine. Revenues are growing. Net incomes are still a billion dollars a quarter. Shares outstanding are plummeting as they buy the buy stuff back. Operating expenses are dropping. And this is all before Alex Chris. I made another video about this. I'm not going to go through all of it again, but I just want to make the point that we're down 80% from highs that are that are two and a half years ago. So this is this is value to me. This is the this is one of those opportunities I just described where I made a bunch of money. And if the market doesn't do well in the next year, I won't make money off of this. I'll probably lose most of it. And I'm okay with that. I believe my crypto and Bitcoin related investments will weather the storm no matter what. And I'll be adding to my short position on Best Buy as a hedge against major issues. Plus, I I have a bunch of cash. So I'm covered, but look at this. There's gaps on this profile. 
on the daily time frame all over the place and huge ones. If this thing in the next year, if this thing in the next year can just go up to the weekly 200 moving average, which is, I think is actually pretty easy. I think it can do that. That's at $144. If I just look at that and I don't even need that, let's just go to a hundred. Let's say that it just mean reverts. Let's say that it just mean reverts, which means that all this, all this divergence and the fact that it's grinded down in this bottom range, the bulk of this drop happened in a short time. For two years, we've just been trading down to sideways. This will mean revert, and all that means is it'll go up to about 103. Let's say it goes to 103. I have 3,700 calls, $325,000 contributed to this right now. If it goes to 103, and it did that by April, I would make 2.2 million in profit. 2.2 million. If if for some reason it takes longer, let's say it's July, let's say two quarters pass and it takes till July, I still make a million dollars. I'm still up 320% off of a 65% move. This is asymmetric. This is a diversified asymmetric bet like the others that I did. This is where opportunity lies. And this isn't the only one I have. Again, if we go back over here, I've got PayPal, but I've also got Hood. That's like maybe three to four hundred percent returns. PayPal is like almost a thousand, depending upon the timing of it happening. And these are three to four hundred percent versus underlying. And SoFi and RG is closer to like eight eight hundred to a thousand percent versus the underlying moving a hundred percent. And you can just see asymmetric opportunities here. Again, just between ArcG, SoFi, Hood, PayPal, and a little bit left over in Square. And I've got some in Okta. I've got asymmetric opportunities in these with these options that are all good until 2025. So I've got a year for them to play out. Really a good six months to make a lot of money. And then it starts to degrade. But these bets have been, tr have been sitting down for over two years. And with an environment where rates are going to be coming down... I've got another video I'm going to include at the end of this one. Watch it. It, it talks from, a, from a, a legend in the banking industry who's talking about from Truist, a former CEO, who says, hey, guys, this if if this plays out the way it is, like the, during the dot-com bubble with rates dropping, bank, banks are going to do really well. So SoFi is going to do well. Some of these transactional ones could still do well, like PayPal could do well. Hood could do well. Square could do well. So again, and then there's the almost 40% that I have in Bitcoin related investments in crypto. And then ARC Genomics, just a genomic fund. That one too, I won't pull it up, but that one looks a lot like PayPal as far as opportunity. And I've got how much? Uh, almost 9, 10% of my portfolio in it. So I can make lots of money even with one of these. If one of them does all right, I make a bunch of money. And I'm good for the year. That's the thing I'm trying to get across to you. That will make up for any losses I have and the others completely failing. So I've got multiple asymmetric bets. If any of them play out, I do really well. And that's how I made 700% last year. And that's what I'm trying to convey to you guys and get across to you. Take bets. Take calculated ones. That's what I do. And... See if there's opportunity, and you don't have to make it 15%, but what if you did 5 What if you did 5% of your portfolio? And again, use the options calculators. Use these calculators. Use the options chain to look and see where interest is. Don't just get into options and start small. If you're getting into options, there's times for that. We happen to believe be in what I believe is a perfect time to make a bunch of money with long calls if you're invested in the right things that have been brutalized for over two to three years. Robinhood's like three years because of the stupid decisions that they made with GameStop and with Citadel. So, and people forget about this stuff. They're like, oh, it'll never come back. I hate them. I hate them. Well, you know what? Greed is good. People love money. They forget about the wrongs of the past real quick when it benefits them. So, again, just... Feel free to step outside of your comfort zone. Try something new. Start small. Learn. Uh, hit me up. Ask me any questions that you have, video ideas that you have, 
things that you want to learn more about, whether it's macro fundamentals, TA, uh, my investment thesis, how I, how I, my investment career actually goes back to me watching my father back during the dot com bubble right before that happened. Um, learned a ton along the way from that. I lost a ton in 2008, like an idiot. Um, I didn't even know how options worked, but I just knew that they were a multiplier of gains. That's a fun way to learn. 2008 was a real fun way to learn that not being hedged and not understanding what you're doing can be super painful. So again, I, I'm not a spring chicken when it comes to this stuff, but I'm also somebody who is okay learning new things and continuing to explore and change. And I think that's massively beneficial in your investment career. Anyway, I digress. I've been ranting long enough. Um, please like, subscribe. Like I said, join if you can and contribute or just tell it, share, just share, share this with other people. Um, share the video on X, uh, join X. If you're not on X, I give out tons of great information on there. Um, subscribe to this if you're not already. Turn on the alerts. I will give more alpha, I promise you. So be a part of this. Let's learn together. Let's, let's do great things in our investment careers. And let's make a lot of money and have a lot of fun doing it. Love you guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Talk to you later.